My name is Clay Murchis. I'm the Vice President of Safety and Human Resources. We have about 600 trucks. Um, we're located in New Ulm, Minnesota. Um, uh, 150 of our units are uh, our contractor units, and then the rest, 450, are company drivers. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about video technology and how that video technology will really have an impact on safety. And I think, as, as we watched, Peyton Manning and listen to Peyton Manning speak yesterday, one of the things that he talked about and focused on was being able to get out of the play and then focus on his iPad and review what plays have done and what plays had happened. Uh, and you see that with Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, you know, after maybe they have a three and out or something like that, they go over to the sideline and they study their iPad and they see exactly what happened and what the errors occurred. So here, what I want to be able to do is just talk a little bit about um, how we use the video technology um, in order to train our drivers and then also to help exonerate our drivers and keep our driving force. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about this slide right here. And, and every story is different with a driver. And perception is different than reality. And uh, the video technology gives us the ability to be able to say, OK, when a mistake happens, what is the true reality of the situation rather than just going by the driver's story and statement. Now, obviously right here this is rear end collision and when we see this rear end collision we're going to look at the story, listen to the driver's story initially, get the video and then see if that is really true and, and, and reality. Driver is involved in a rear end collision. He calls us and he says a, you know, a, a pickup truck cut in front of me and slammed on his brakes and took away my following distance. So of course, when we uh, initially speak to him, I'd, you know, why did he cut in front of you? Why did he uh, um, decrease your following distance? Well, the, you know, there's construction way ahead, um, so you know, traffic was coming down the one lane, and he just jetted on over and then slammed on the brakes. So again, we get the video, we're able to review it real quick, and then see what the true uh, story was. So we see, obviously, the white pickup truck didn't cut in front of him, cut away from him, uh, which created more space, but. Typically, what we would do is, you know, we take our driver's words for the truth, right? And and we go to battle for him and go to, you know, uh, go into the ring for him and say, hey, we're going to stand up for you. And then all of a sudden, you know, maybe more details come out several months down the line, and now you're like, oh wow, holy cow, this isn't really what my driver's story was. So we're able to take these videos, look at them real quick, and say, okay, what's our liability? What's our risk? Are we gonna go ahead and, and try to settle this claim right away or do we wanna defend it? We're also able to take this video and use it in training materials, right? So now we could move forward, we could show it to other drivers and say, look, now you're held accountable. And this does hold you accountable for the mistakes that you make and the errors that you make. We wanna retain you, we wanna keep you. We're gonna use this technology to help that. So what, did the mis what mistakes did this driver make? So the mistakes that he made, and we don't have the uh, inward view showing here because we don't have the, um, um, the authorization from our driver to be able to show that, but the inward view shows that he was not paying attention. He was actually looking down. It looked like maybe he had a cell phone or something. Um, so obviously he had a big distraction, right? So this next slide right here, you know, shows maybe some of the true reality that happens, right? So for whatever reason, the traffic is slowing on over here to the left. We did not make contact. We see that our driver is slightly distracted, but he gets his focus back and when he needs to get it back. And you see his reaction right away, right? So he's keeping his eyes moving, even though he is maybe somewhat uh, um, multitasking, we'll say, right? Um, and he's able to react quickly and avoid a collision. So these are the tools that we're able to, to use in training efforts again, be able to say, this is the correct response. He kept his eyes moving, you know, keep your eyes moving every two, two seconds, you know, don't use that fixed stare, use the Smith System principles, and talk about the values driven driving principles as well. So when we think of this right here, this is true, right? People, he did have a great following distance. That following distance is immediately taken away by two vehicles trying to pass the, pass the big truck. He's paying attention, looking in the mirror and seeing those, pa those passenger vehicles come up the side of him and know that they're gonna jet on over and he's reacting quickly. Okay. The next slide I'm gonna show here real quick will be another exoneration. And this is, uh, this is a difficult one. 
Um, typically what happens when we have a, an oncoming vehicle cross in front of us, they try to tag us right away for driving too fast for the conditions that we're in. Um, and they always think, hey, the big driver, the big truck driver is, is going faster than what he should. And then again, we're trying to defend ourselves. Here, this is quick. We were able to send this video right here to uh, the, the patrol officer right away saying, no, look, we, had, we were actually under the speed limit. Speed limit was 45. We're at 37 miles an hour. Our hands are in the exact position that they should be in. Our driver's moving his eyes, keeping his eyes moving. So he's doing everything right. So again, just another exoneration uh, video to be able to help us defend ourselves. How quick were you able to get that information to the patrolman? Yeah, so this information right here, um, it, he was able to download it to us and push and force send it. Um, it gets to us in seconds, and then we're able to email it to the uh, law enforcement official. When they're still on the side of the road? They're still on the side of the road, okay. yep. Our next slide right here is, uh, it was very, very helpful on the work comp side. So right here, this is a true story. We're over in Chicago, of course, downtown Chicago and uh, we're coming up to a stop sign. A drunk driver in the middle of the day, I think drunk drivers at night, this is the middle of the day, can't make a, a complete turn and runs into the front of us. Yeah! Oh! Now what's interesting about this is my passenger, the, the co-driver, um, uh, claimed a work comp injury. Back and neck. So we were able to see that video, show that video to his attorney, and we settled for $100. So work comp, if you didn't have it, we had nothing to dispute that there was really no contact. What triggered the camera was a hard braking event with the driver actually seeing this other driver making a wide swing. So the impact wasn't even hard enough from the car to trigger the camera. It was actually our hard braking event that triggered the camera. So again, the show, no G-forces on that, on that vehicle and then no injury can be sustained by our driver. So, and then the last video I wanna show is, uh, is gonna be the, I guess, the, the funnest one to look at. But uh, again, exoneration right away with our driver. Um, so this vehicle uh, obviously runs a stop sign, um, comes out, hits us in our trailer tandems, and uh, we lose control and roll the vehicle over. Um, the initial report from, there weren't any uh, witnesses, eyewitnesses, but the initial report was your driver sideswiped the vehicle, lost control and rolled. So again, we're able to get the video right away and see that reality is totally different than maybe someone's perception coming up to the scene and, uh, and show this to the highway patrol officer right away. He immediately wrote a t citation on the scene still um, to the other party and, and exonerated our driver right away. So in this case right here didn't even have any litigation whatsoever. Yeah. You guys have any questions about the drive cam system, how it works, how we use it um, in our maybe day-to-day -day operation? How many events are you reviewing the drivers today? Okay, yeah, so the question is how many events are we reviewing every day? Um, we average about 15 events that we review with drivers a day. I have three safety managers, so they speak to approximately five drivers a piece every morning, first thing in the morning. So we're reviewing the, all the previous events from the day before. We're looking at those events and saying, okay, these are the, and actually, I need to give this to Lydix, right? Lydix is actually doing all the, the dashboard and scorecarding for us. So we don't have to physically manage through all those events. Lytix manages it and says, oh, here are your risky behaviors. These are the guys you need to focus on every morning. How many power units do you have? We have 600 trucks. So this is very interesting. We're, um, we're gonna participate in FMCSA's research study um, for the hours of service and the 34 hour restart provision and, and such. Um, we have over 6,000 events um, triggered by drive cam. We're reviewing every single one of those events. Um, and out of 6,000 events, we've only had two fatigue-related events. 6, out of 6,000. Those two fatigue-related events were just hard braking events. Um, no collision resulted from either of those events. But, um, so very, very uh, helpful for FMCSA maybe to review their restart provision and uh, the reality of the 34-hour uh, restart and, uh, and fatigue. 
find any increase in driver turnover when you first implemented the units? We only had two drivers that we lost. Okay. That was it. They didn't even give it a chance. When we brought the truck in to install it, they left. So out of 600, though, it's a fantastic number, and we probably didn't need them to begin with. So we said, okay, no problem. Yes. Yes. So uh, we are a little bit unique with our uh, contractors. Our contractors are lease drivers. So of course we're able to say as part of the lease equipment that you have and that you're purchasing, drive cam is a, a portion of that. You know, anti-rollover devices, Qualcomm, uh, uh, all our safety systems that we have installed. Now our true contractors that own their own equipment, it's totally voluntary for them. I pay for it 100 percent though. So I say if you want. An event recorder and a critical event recorder is what we say. We don't call it a video camera. A critical event recorder and an accident recorder. Then uh, we provide it to you for free for working at JRS. Yeah. What's your percentage of drivers that are independent contractors like that that choose to take it? Uh, so I have 18 independent contractors. Seven of them have said, give it to me. Okay. okay. So a little less than 50%, probably 40%, I guess. Any other questions? Yeah, so again, three safety managers are looking at it. First thing in the morning, it takes them about an hour to look at those events and then speak to the drivers that had those critical events the day before. So, yep, including speaking. So, you know, it, we spend maybe 15 minutes a driver. Um, we're able to do most of our coaching over the phone. We do have um, a, a, a Qualcomm system where we're able to send the video over the Qualcomm so the driver could look at that video as well. So they're seeing everything that we're seeing and we're reviewing that. The, um, how much impact have you seen on your workers' compensation? You one. This is the only work comp claim that we've had um, that was not legitimate. So of course the female that had rolled her truck over, that was a legitimate claim. Um, we haven't had any other work comp. We're, we're a, a van reefer business carrier, so we don't have very many work comp claims. Most of ours are unfortunately getting in and out of the truck. Other questions? What are some uh, metrics or results that you, you point to? Okay, yeah, so some of the things that we look at, obviously we, we want to be able to reduce our speeding events um, with just about any type of collision. Speed is the number one cause of, of those uh, collisions. And it may be coupled up with other things as well, such as inattention and stuff like that. But uh, we want to cut the driver's speed down. When we cut the driver's speed down, then they're able to stop a little bit quicker. Severity is reduced. Um, and then the, uh, potentially even a collision is reduced, right? And we were able to see that right in here with a couple of our clips where their driver had a reduced speed. Um, obviously when the vehicle turned in front of us, it was less of an impact because of that reduced speed. The other issue with uh, the reduced speed, we were able to totally avoid a couple of collisions um, with people maneuvering in front of us. So reduced speed is our number one. And we've reduced our speed um, violations by 35%. So big reduction. We're actually looking for another 50% on top of that. So again, if we reduce that speed, that's really going to reduce that severity of the claim, reduce my loss runs. <laughs>